I was diagnosed with depression and um, not long after I had my daughter in 1996 so that was maybe around my late teens early 20s um, that was the first time I ever felt low probably was looking back maybe just a little bit of postnatal depression at that stage um, whenever I got my first script and I took the fluoxetine it actually did make me feel better um, for a short period of time but uh, there was nothing that ever really took you know made me feel normal I never felt normal but I was always when every time I went back to the doctor it was always a conversation of around you know let's try with a different antidepressant let's try with citalopram you know propanolol for the anxiety and it just never seemed to make me feel the way I thought that I should feel um so I I had a, a good conversation with my doctor at one point um I had just come out of hospital I had like a little abscess and hadn't been that well so I was I was in the doctors quite a lot um just to to for a review um and she asked me a few questions about what it, how it felt in my own self recently and things that had been going on. Um, and from that conversation, she said, Emma, I think, you know, for the next couple of months, could you keep a mood diary and come back and see me? I didn't really know where she was going with it, but I did. And I went back to see her and she said, I think you have bipolar and I think we should send you to um, a psychiatric appointment. The whole experience from diagnosis to medication it's just made me feel it was it was a it was a very emotional journey whenever I was um, diagnosed and and given my first uh, script for bipolar, because I actually felt like you know, in a in a medical sense, um, that you know I was being brought in like it's okay we've, we've got you now we understand you now and I felt within a few weeks I felt just myself again where how I should have felt. The main symptoms of bipolar disorder, especially for me, aside from the highs and lows, which is obvious. It's the obsessive behaviour, which can be really crippling. I mean, I've had obsessive I think that what was quite obvious was the obsessive behaviour and the hyper-focus on things. So quite often whenever you go to the doctors um, with, you know, symptoms of not feeling very well, you're generally low at that point. Um, speaking from experience and I understand in my own um, sort of mood disorder, um, I can, you know, I can now see that whenever you're on... In, obsessive hypomania hyper focus on whatever it is that you're obsessing about you're not going to go to the doctor's then because you actually feel like you're on top of the world mostly you know you, you feel whatever you're doing at the time um you, yeah you, you feel like there's nothing wrong with it it's whenever you hit the low and the depressive stage so i can understand why a lot of people are misdiagnosed because it is whenever you're at the lowest point of bipolar that you you seek you seek help and i suppose that's why I had been diag diagnosed with depression for many, many years before. I'm not sure I would have been able to create this business um, if I didn't have bipolar. Does that sound weird? I don't think I would have. You know, I genuinely, you know, it takes an awful lot of, um, it takes an awful lot of hours and work and focus and, you know, no days off and, and things that somebody who tends to have hyper-focus and obsessive behaviour can do, more so than somebody who's maybe not bipolar. I'm not saying that people with bipolar can't create businesses, that sounds strange, but I do think that it's definitely helped me and I don't I don't see it as a negative um thing on 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 my life certainly and the life of my friends and family. It's 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 fine.